The Poison Warlock has continued to improve. There have been several changes made to the build that increase its clear speed, dramatically improve boss killing capability, and boost the survivability, all while retaining the amazing playstyle that this build offers. Recently, 11th Hour Games released a survey, asking players how they feel about bug fixes being implemented mid-cycle. Given that so many popular Warlock builds abuse bugs, I feel it's important to mention that this build does not. So regardless of what the outcome may be, this build will remain intact, or perhaps you're viewing the video after those future changes destroyed your old build. Either way, you can still enjoy this build. So let's go ahead and jump right into some of the changes we've made to improve this build. First up, you'll notice that Fissure is much larger, and we're doing this through the specialization tree. Of Gloom and Flames is going to actually cast a separate Fissure behind the target as well. This basically doubles our damage output. Through Chaotic Rupture, we'll actually get the ability to cast Chaos Bolts instead of Spirits at times with this Fissure as well. This really ramps up the damage, especially for boss killing. Be mindful that even though we have Devour the Damned in a Chaos Bolt specialization tree, which allows us to regenerate some mana when we hit a cursed target, it's not enough because Chaos Bolt itself costs 10 mana and we now have two Fissures casting Chaos Bolts as well. To offset that cost, we now spec into Soul Stealer through the Passive Tree. This increase our mana regeneration by 32% and that line that says effect cooldown 24 seconds means nothing. It's actually just an incorrect tooltip in the game. You can completely ignore that. In addition, you'll have a 13% chance to gain 13 mana back when the chaos bolts hit a target as well, provided there's a curse on the enemy. This setup also increases our survivability. By using the fissures and having them cast chaos bolts, we deal more direct damage than a pure damage over time build or the previous version was doing. This means we often kill enemies before they have a chance to damage our character. This is really nice because when we only use damage over time, we actually allow more enemies to get to us, hit us, and chunk off some of that ward that keeps us alive. The changes to the build setup in regards to Fissure and Chaos Bolts has also transformed this character from a slower boss killer to a quick one, so that's a very welcome change as well. The next most impactful set of changes came through Equipment, Blessings, and even Idols, and we're going to lump all of these together because they really directly affect each other. We're going to run Plague Bearer's Staff. Previously, we were using a one-hander and the offhand Rot Mind. Plague Bearer's Staff has really nice implicits. The 46 spell damage allows you to scale your spell damage to a much larger number. 57% increased damage over time is going to benefit not only the poison damage this builds, but also a little bit of the necrotic damage we deal over time to targets. As for the affixes on the stat, they're all beneficial as well, but I do want to point out having a 100% chance to play, getting additional poison penetration with that plague, and dealing 11% more damage to targets that are afflicted with it. The next piece of equipment that we're looking to change is in the glove slot, and we're looking for the experimental affix here. 8% of current health lost per second, and 8% of missing health gained is ward per second. Gonna synergize really well with the last steps of the living and exsanguinous. Also worth noting that you can get a much higher roll or better roll for the percentage of health that's lost and gained is ward. So keep an eye out for these and make sure that you're taking care of the mages every time you see them. By farming the monoliths and then the bosses to improve the blessings, you'll actually get access to much better resist stats. And this is really gonna help your character survive, but more importantly, it'll actually increase the damage output of your character since you can now use better idols. Increasing spell damage while at low health, which we'll mainly be using in this build, now compounds with that improved spell damage that we have from the Plague Bearer staff. Idols that increase the poison damage you deal while Aura of Decay is active is a tremendous boost to this build, and if you're able to find one that also increases the poison damage you deal overall, you can basically double dip. For humble idols, you can get increased chance to poison on hit and increase poison damage at the same time. We're able to stack a lot more of these since our blessings are now contributing to our additional resist. The general theme or concept of the playstyle has not really changed. We're still going to be casting Spirit plague on the enemies running around with aura of decay active 100 of the time and this is probably a really difficult echo to see but that aura is in fact active around our character and we're never going to remove that we'll just keep that up for the damage buff that it provides when you get larger enemies you can choose to cast the fissure however previously we were kind of spamming fissure all the time you'll notice that when i cast fissure here we can then essentially move around the enemy and it's going to go down rather quickly if you continue to spam fissure like we did in the original version you'll actually just go oom so be mindful of the enemies, and again, this kind of furthers the knowledge that you want of the enemies you're encountering in order to make use of your mana. You can cast Spirit Plague, use the Chaos Bolts, and this is plenty to sustain. In fact, you'll see them regenerating mana. That combined with the Aura of Decay is going to take down all the enemies, aside from the really high health ones, very quickly. The worst or biggest negative of this build is actually picking up all the loot. Since you do deal some damage over time, often enemies will die behind you, and you'll have to retreat to pick something up that you're looking at or even just scour the map that you're looking for upgrades for your character. But you can see the survivability of this build very good at no point are you ever in danger of actually having the character go down. Here's an example of what not to do with this build. Don't run around just spamming your fissure whenever you can. You'll see how quickly it's going to deplete your mana, and there's no amount of chaos pulse that you can cast in order to replenish it. We do obviously have the ability to kill a lot of targets very quickly, 
But again, if I cast a single fissure, look at that mana pool deplete. And then if I choose to cast another one at the objective here, I'm basically going to be oom. And it's going to take a while to recover this mana, despite having mana regeneration on a couple of slots in our equipment. So be very mindful of the enemy types as mentioned, and this is really going to help you sustain your mana pool. I know this is going to be a really big concern for a lot of people, but you can essentially cast a fissure, and you don't need to do anything other than just cast your chaos bolts when possible. This will give you additional mana regen, and then you can conserve your mana in a degree as well. If there's nothing threatening on the field in front of you, just use your Spirit Plague, cast some Chaos Bolts to regen, and then you'll have the ability to cast Fissure when it's needed or if you feel like you're getting overwhelmed. This point here, I can cast another Fissure. This will take care of what's there, and then anything new that may spawn. So just be really mindful of your mana pool in general. Since you have the ability to sustain your health, I actually notice a lot of times I very rarely even look at my health pool. Essentially, if I've run out of ward, I'm going to go down because our health is so low. That actually causes me to look both at the map and then at the mana pool and kind of train yourself to do that. And you'll be a lot more successful. The majority of the changes that I made to this build were meant to increase the damage that we could deal to bosses. And that's because the boss kill speed had started to become slow as we started pushing towards the end game or empowered monoliths. As you can see, we now deal plenty of damage to bosses. And it's really a welcome change because I was concerned that a lot of people would be turned off of the build just from the slower kill time that it could have. However, at this point, thanks to the double fissure and the chaos bolts being cast, you can see essentially we pretty much melt bosses even when they're empowered. Pretty confident that this will push up past several hundred corruption by the time I'm able to get there. The only negative really that I can think in terms of the changes that have been made to the build is that you can no longer play a full health version. Previously, I would mentioned that you could play low life or even a full health version, whatever you were more comfortable with. But now that we've changed the gloves and the equipment slot, you're pretty much locked into a ward and low life setup. So that's an unfortunate consequence, but overall it's made the build more powerful. I'll leave a link to the original build where it goes into all the skills that weren't mentioned in this video in greater detail. If you're looking for places to place your final passive points beyond level 90, all within the Lich Tree, Desolation, Lasting Stench, Crippling Insight, and Unclosing Wounds are all very good choices. All these will continue to scale the damage that this character can deal. It's also worth noting that Hungering Souls might be able to be worked into this build as well. You could potentially replace Chaos Bolts or even Soul Feast with this ability. Hungering Souls, when applied to an enemy, will deal increased damage over time to the target. Soul Feast, although beneficial to the build, would be the first choice I would look to place this ability. This would give you a second ability that you cast similar to Spirit Plague. Essentially, you'd cast Spirit Plague, then use Hungering Souls, and then continue on with your nuke. As always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.